So let's start. Can you explain me the security model in Salesforce? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the security model in Salesforce consists of a four parts like object level security, field level security, organization level security, and the record level security. Mm -hmm. Object level security, it means uh, with the help of profile and permission set, uh, we can uh, restrict and we can give the permissions of the objects uh, like create permission, create, read and uh, edit permissions and in field level security uh, they are also with the help of a profile and permission set we can restrict and uh, uh, give the permissions to the user uh, to fields and in record level security there are four types of sharings like uh, in OWD sharing rules, manual sharings uh, sharing also mentioned. Okay. So, what type of permission yes, we use to handle from profiles and permission sets? Please repeat. So, what kind of permissions we use to handle from profiles and permission sets? Um, uh, uh, with profile, we can restrict the permissions. Restrict. Just suppose. Uh, uh, restrict. Okay. Right. Okay. Just suppose like uh, for uh, users, uh, we don't want to give the permission to view or to edit the record. So edit the uh, to view the object or the field. And for permission sets, uh, we can add on the functionality. Uh, like uh, if the user, if uh, there are two users and uh, in the same, with the same profile and with that profile, we restrict the uh, object uh, permissions. But for the one user, we want to give the permission uh, to view or create. So in that the uh, case we will use permission sets. Okay. And uh, from where or what are the different ways from where we can manage the field level securities? Uh, field level securities, while we are creating the uh, fields, there also we can uh, restrict for the profiles and uh, for field level security, for the permissions that we add the permission. Sorry, so what did you say from the? Uh, while we are creating okay. the fields, yes. from there also we will uh, give the permissions uh, or we will restrict the pro for the profile. Okay. And uh, for permission sets, we will uh, like make one permission set and assign for that user. Okay. And we will give that the field level permissions for that also, for the, from there also. And any other? Uh, oh. From page layout also. Okay. From the page layout, we yeah, can make it read only. Uh, read only or require so we can make from there on. Okay. And from trigger also we will make that the uh, field uh, like mandatory. So what are the different ways from where we can make this field required? Um, uh, uh, while we are creating the field, mm -hmm. and then from page uh, from validation rules and then trigger from schema builder no idea have you ever checked the schema builder uh, yes ma'am i checked uh, for the relationships so what we used to see there or what was uh, we used to get from schema builder can you give me an overview uh, yes ma'am uh, when from schema builder, uh, I, I use for that for the relation for check the relationships, like which object, with which object we can, we make the relationships, like which relationship we make. And for fields also, uh, I check from there, but not remember. So. Okay. Can we, okay. So what are formula fields? Uh, my formula fields is a custom field from there, uh, like we can give, we give, uh, we can, we can calculate with the help of formula and or expressions just suppose uh, for the discount if uh, we are talking like uh, if I want to give discount for uh, for uh, like um, uh, we, we, we will give it to the discount also so in that case we will use the formula fields. Okay so anytime if you want to perform any calculation based on the current object fields or the related object fields so for which for this we can use the formula fields where we can create the expressions and get the derived results. Okay. So can you explain me the page layouts and record types? 
the uh, page layout is used to control the layout of the organization uh, layout of the organization just like for button clicks uh, button fields related lists on object uh, and uh, uh, they are helpful in organizing uh, user interface page uh, by determining which fields and related list or custom links are required read only and visible for the user and record types record types are used uh, uh like to show a different layout to the different users or for the pick list also we will use this record types so just suppose like there are two users and i want to uh show uh, few a few pictures with one user and few pick list values with another user so in that case also we will use record types okay and okay do you know about the flows also oh yes ma'am okay. but not uh, so much basis of the flow okay so what are the different types of flow and how you will going to decide when to go with which flow okay so uh, there are the five types of flows uh, screen flow record triggered flow schedule flow uh, platform event flow and auto launch flow uh, for uh, like uh, any use of we want to uh, show the user uh in a form, like um, in the form of like registration form and all with the help of screen flow we will use this and for record triggered flow when we want to uh, like uh, when a record is created updated or deleted in this like for with those scheduled triggered flow is like uh, when we want to uh, like when we want to launch a flow in a specified time so uh, it will uh, uh, like for each record so it will uh, then we will use schedule triggered flow and platform event flow it means like when a uh, platform event message is received so in that for we will use platform event flow and auto launch flow uh, like it is used to invoke by apex trigger okay so so like the code you are given a requirement so how you will going to decide whether you should go with flow or you should go with trigger so what will be your points to check whether i should go with flow or with trigger okay ma'am uh, like i'll use flow for the simple uh, uh, when uh, for the simple uh, like business process i use the flow Mm -hmm. for the complex uh, like i'll use the trigger so i'll use flow for like uh, when uh, when uh, when i'll create or uh, update the record mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, like when i when i have to gather the data for, from a user uh, through the screens and uh, it is you will going to check whether the requirement is simple or complex okay so any other yes. point except this like will you check whether currently uh, on this object are there any automation working and which is created based on flows like you can check the number of record also like if there number related records are more okay or if it has more number of object related to it and you have to perform your code logic based on this related records only so in such cases also you can decide it is better to go with triggers Like because this flow used to take more time to execute as compared to triggers, right? So it might be possible in the future we can uh, the client can get the CPU limit exceed error. So because of this factor, we will decide we will try to go with the triggers only. Okay. So based on the requirement and your points, you can uh, suggest them that in this point it is better to go with flow, and for these use cases or for this point it is better to go with triggers. Okay. So they completely depend upon the requirement and the ongoing automation on that particular aspect. Yes. Okay. The sharing rules. In sharing rules, uh, like when we want to share the, uh, when we want to share a record with another user, then we will use sharing rules. There are two types of sharing rules: criteria-based sharing rules and the owner-based sharing rules. Uh, based on any criteria or based on any conditions, uh, then we will use the criteria-based sharing rules. And the owner-based sharing rules are like uh, uh, owner-based sharing rules. so my question is if your owd is public read and write okay so in such cases can yes. we create the sharing rules
No, ma'am. Why? Then because we have the full access uh, to share the records. Okay. So, what is the difference between queues and public group? So, uh, ma'am, queues, queues, queues is queues is, uh, is the owner of the records. Where public groups are not the owner of the records. And the public group we will use mainly for sharing sharing the records. And uh, queues are the uh, queues are the owner of the records. Where public groups are not the owner of the records. Yes. And the public group we are using mainly for the sharing of the records. And uh, uh, like queues are used for give the permissions uh, of the records. Yes, that's it. Okay, is a requirement. Okay, a contact is there. Okay. and based on this contact email and the last name i want to identify or i want to uh, separate these contact records okay if the email id plus la uh, last name of the contact okay so there there is uh, concatenation is done email id and the last name yes. okay so now on the basis of this complete string i want to uh, this identify the duplicates if there is again uh, any other record based on this complete string then i want to avoid this so how we can achieve yes. this and with the help of hmm. and didn't got your point uh, like uh, we don't have to create duplicate record based in that concatenation yes Okay, so with the help of trigger, we will achieve this. Uh, like uh, for the event, we will choose this is like before insert and before update. Uh, mm -hmm. I am choosing like before insert because uh, like uh, it will give the uh, error. It will uh, give the error before the data is saving to the database. Uh, it will check once like whether the uh, name or the email is uh, not matching or matching. If matching, then it will give the error. And if it is not matching, then it will save to the database. And before update, I am using uh, because like uh, how many records are there, and we'll check the existing records. So if the if there is any record uh, same for that the last name or the email, so it will uh, give the error. If not, then it will save to the database. Okay. So have you worked on the duplicates and the matching rules? Yes, ma'am. So what we used to do there in this duplicate and matching rules? Uh, like, uh, we are create. We are they are also will like uh, the. Uh, we used to do the same thing, thing, right? Yes. So can we do like this? We can create a field, okay, and it can be a unique field, okay, by making the unique checkbox true. So and in such case, if we make it unique, so whenever we are using uploading our data based on the uh, using the data loader or the imports and all, so based on this unique field, it can always check whether this is already present or not, or and it will avoid the duplication, right? Or we can uh, do this using the duplicates and the matching rules based on the last name and the email field. If they are already present, then it will give an error that it is present, right? Yeah. So uh, these things will be more better than going directly with the triggers. Triggers. Okay. So what is a user in Salesforce? Then uh, user it means. Uh, So a user is someone who can able to log in in Salesforce, right? Who is having the login credential, the username and the password. Yes, and this user will be assigned with some of the profile. Okay, that is mandatory. A user should have a profile, and based on this profile, he is able to view the applications, and he will be having the access of records and the sorry, the objects and the fields. Okay, and the tabs. so this is a user who can able to log in or who has login credential assigned with the profiles uh, which is mandatory and the optional one are the permission sets based on which he can able to do the things in the salesforce practices to write trigger yes ma'am uh, the first step like uh, we will use we will use uh, one trigger per object Then we will uh, we will not we will not use hard code IDs and uh, we will avoid using uh, 
uh, so fuels inside the car loop emins inside car loops and uh, why we should create one trigger per object When we will create a multiple uh, triggers and uh, object, the order of execution, uh, like uh, the order of execution, will not guarantee. Like uh, it is, if the code is saved and the trigger, when the triggers are invoked, the order of execution uh, run and it will not guarantee that uh, from the, uh, like the first which trigger will run. So in this case, uh, we will use that. Uh, we will use uh, one trigger per object. Okay, so have you ever faced the read-only error in triggers? Yes, ma'am. So, what are the read-only errors and how we can avoid them? And maybe uh, this read-only trigger will uh, come in the update because uh, we will uh, mainly this read-only uh, error will come at the update the event. Uh, Which event? Okay. What we used to do here is uh, read only error we used to get in the after triggers. Okay. So in the after trigger, uh, in the trigger dot new and new map, the record list which we used to retrieve or which we used to get are in the read only state. We cannot directly perform DML or cannot update them directly. Okay. Like we used to do in before trigger, we uh, without performing any DML, we can update them. But this is not possible in the after trigger because the records are in read only state. So we need to create an instance of the same object and then for the record for this instance, we provide the IDs and then on this new instance, we perform our changes, which is then updated. Okay. What are null pointer exceptions? Null pointer exception. Uh, suppose uh, like pointer ex exceptions uh, when we are uh, retrieving the data from any object, but there is no uh, in return there is uh, no data coming, so that null pointer exception will come. Okay. And uh, do we have before and delete? Why? Uh, because uh, uh, like records are saved to the database and after that it is deleted. So that's why we don't have like undelete option before undelete. Okay. What is the difference between trigger dot new and trigger dot new map? I mean trigger dot new, uh, like we will uh, trigger dot new, we will get the list new list of the records. And trigger dot new map, it means we will get the uh, IDs of the uh, new list of the records. IDs of the new list of record. Yes. And in before insert, what context variable have values? Does trigger dot new have value there? No. Only trigger dot. Trigger dot new will value, but trigger dot new map will not. And old and old map. Okay. Okay, what is asynchronous FX? Asynchronous FX, it means like the uh, process executes uh, in the background and user doesn't have to uh, wait for the task to finish. Okay, so what is batch FX? Batch effects we will use for the large, uh, like we will use the uh, run large jobs that would exceed the normal uh, preceding unit, preceding limits. What is the normal limit? Uh, and the normal limits, like for the synchronous, it is like uh, 100 for mm -hmm. the normal limit is 200 for the batch. No, 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 no. What is this is the chunk size, right? 200 and all. Yes. What is the normal limit to process the record in synchronous? Synchronous. Okay. It's 50,000, right? Yes. 
the number of records which we can process in the synchronous apex is the 50000 and if you want to process more than 50000 up to then, up to 5 million then we use this apex yes sorry this batch apex okay can we call one batch from another Yes, we can call. Okay, five limit is five batch can execute simultaneously. Okay, and this can be done yeah. only in the finish method, not in execute or the start method. If you try to do so, it will or uh, uh, Salesforce will give you the error that they are not allowed in this start and the execute. What are future methods? When future methods are used. uh like uh, when which methods are used to run in their own thread and do not start until the resources are available till the resources are available what are the resources ma'am uh, uh, just suppose uh, uh, like resources are the values on which or using which we will going to perform or complete our requirement okay it can be the parameters which we will going to pass in future methods okay or it can be any value coming from the another methods and all okay and what type of data types we used or we pass in this future methods and what what type of arguments or the parameters we pass in future methods or like id sorry ma'am so here we used to pass the primitive data types right the string integer boolean these type of parameters not the non primitives like as object list of as object and there is a reason also why we only pass primitive and not the non primitives okay 